There are two potentially huge spoilers going into the Elimination Chamber in regards to Austin Theory and the Usos. What are they? We're going to go over them today right here on Off The Script. Also, Sasha Banks' rumor killer about her New Japan pro wrestling contract and Jay White may land in WWE. All this plus so much more right here on Off The Script. Why has Triple H been so successful? Why is Triple H running WWE better than Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard on Monday and Friday night? Long-term booking. What's going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. I got a little bit of extra for you. It is February 13th, 2023. I am your host, JD, from New York. As always, coming to you from the OTS venue. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on your Monday afternoons, wherever you may be. Follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Make sure you guys go check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel, including last night's extra. Go check that out. We got plenty of news on Vince McMahon. We got all your week's coverage in that video as well. Go check that out. Monday Night Raw Live, AEW Dynamite Live, SmackDown Live, everything you need is on the homepage. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys enjoy what you see here. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and I love if you guys can help me out and hit that thumbs up. 1,000 likes minimum today right here on Off The Script. I want to start off with Jay White. This is the most interesting story of the week in regards to me because I think Jay White's great. And I just, for the life of me, for the longest time, could not envision... And you guys know why, for obvious reasons, could not envision Jay White in a WWE ring, in a WWE setting. That has changed in 2023. There will be people online that say he's a better fit for AEW. There will be people online that say he's a better fit for WWE. No matter who gets Jay White, it is absolutely impossible for Jay White not to succeed wherever he is. But I have a gut feeling that we may end up seeing Jay White on a WWE show, whether that's Raw or SmackDown, following WrestleMania. Word going around is that Jay White is looking to work in the United States, move back to the United States, but nothing is set in stone as of yet, even though he just lost a Loser Leaves Japan match at this weekend's New Japan Pro Wrestling show. Fightful Select is reporting that in January, White's contract was set to expire and numerous companies had interest in the former world champion. WWE felt confident that they could land Jay White, but they were told that hardly guarantees anything at all. Despite online speculation that White could pop up in the Royal Rumble, leading to the Royal Rumble, obviously he didn't show up. That was never in discussions. And I told you guys so because Jay White he had a loser leave Japan match well before the Royal or after the Royal Rumble, I should say. He was involved in whatever he was doing before the Royal Rumble to build to that match. And a lot of people were like, oh, Jay White's going to be a surprise in the Royal Rumble. He's going to be in the Royal Rumble. He's going to join WWE. I-, I asked how. How is that possible? If he's got a loser leave Japan match a couple of weeks after the Royal Rumble, why would he be allowed to work the Royal Rumble, A, under New Japan contract? And why would New Japan let him in the Royal Rumble and let him work for a rival promotion while under contract while he's set to compete in a loser leaves Japan match? If he shows up in the Royal Rumble, it's all it's like he already had left Japan. So why would why would you go and do that? Nobody really understood that. They were still making predictions that Jay White was gonna be in the Royal Rumble. It was never a guarantee, it was never even a possibility for Jay White to be in the Royal Rumble. So, Fightful 
is told that talent in New Japan Pro Wrestling are of the belief that his contract with the company is up sometime between Battle in the Valley, which he is wrestling this Saturday, Eddie Kingston, Battle in the Valley in California, sometime between Battle in the Valley and WrestleMania, with details being few and far between. Now, WWE sources have repeatedly confirmed that they had long interest in Jay White, but that everything related to the possibility of him coming into the company is being kept very, very secret. Fightful asked around New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they were told, obviously, we'd love to keep him, and we're told that he'd made positive relationships in Impact and in AEW as well. White is scheduled to compete on February 18th against Eddie Kingston at New Japan's Battle in the Valley. I honestly think Jay White's going to show up on the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. I really, that, that, that's my prediction. That is my prediction. I think Triple H is going to bring in Jay White and he's going to show up on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. Now, you're probably asking, JD, I thought you would have said he shows up in AEW. He's a great fit for AEW. Like I said, he's a great fit for any promotion, to be quite honest with you. But I feel like, and don't take me the wrong way here, if Jay White is on his way to AEW, if he wants to work the States, if he wants to be here in the States, and he's on his way to AEW, he will be a top-tier guy. How many top-tier guys does WWE have compared to AEW right now? And I mean legitimately at the top. Not many. Roman Reigns has gone through them all. There are more top guys in AEW right now than there are in WWE on top of the world championship scene. And that is a fact. If Jay White goes to AEW, I feel like he will be successful, but I just feel like he is going to be another name. I don't, I don't think he's going to stand out as much as people think he will in AEW. Yes, there are relationships there. Yes, there are feuds there. Yes, there are world championship caliber matches to be had in AEW. But right now, if Jay White, I want you guys to think about this legitimately. If Jay White goes to AEW, what is he doing in 2023? Exactly what do you think he's going to do in 2023? Nothing. I want Jay White, and Jay White probably wants Jay White, to go somewhere and make an immediate impact. He, he needs to be a meteor hitting fucking earth when he gets into wherever he's going, whether it's WWE or AEW. If he goes to AEW, what is he going to do? Wrestle for the TNT title? What is he going to do? Wrestle Orange Cassidy for the fucking All-Atlantic Championship? Give me a motherfucking break. That's what he's looking at. That's what you're looking at. Why do I say that? Because MJF is not losing the championship at all this year. And I wouldn't fucking, I wouldn't even take the title off of him going into next year because... That's when the whole MJF 2024 campaign is really going to get the ball rolling. MJF may be a champion as long as Roman Reigns has been champion in WWE. That's not Jay White. Jay White is better than wrestling Wardlow or whomever for the TNT title. Wrestling Orange Cassidy or whomever for the All-Atlantic Championship. If Jay White goes to WWE, he makes an immediate impact at the top. He's exactly what they need. He's exactly what they're looking for. He looks incredible. He's in incredible shape. He's a fantastic promo. He's one of the best pro wrestlers on the planet. Triple H would love to have Jay White. Look at the matches that Jay White could have in WWE. AJ Styles, Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns. I mean, I, I, I don't want to start booking Fantasy-like in WWE, but Bloodline versus a reformation of the Bullet Club in WWE would be great, led by Jay White and AJ Styles. Just throwing that out there. I mean, there's so much for him to do in WWE. He makes an immediate impact there. Now, you might not like that. You might not like the sound of that. I think that would be a better fit for him. I think he's tailor-made for WWE programming. I do. And I think he's going to end up there on the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. I think that's the big coup. I think that's the big surprise for Triple H. You know Triple H is going to go all out for the Raw after WrestleMania because the Raw after WrestleMania has not felt like a Raw after WrestleMania in a few years. And Vince killed that. Vince killed that feeling. 
Vince killed that aura because he hates us. He hates the, the, the smarky pro wrestling fans. And that's what the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania was. Triple H is going to really fix that this year. I think Jay White's going to WWE. And you know they'll pay him. And you know they'll pay him to keep him away from AEW. That's just my prediction. Let me know what you guys think down below. Where do you think Jay White's going to end up? WWE or AEW? I think he fits best in AEW. Two major, major Elimination Chamber spoilers. First, with Austin Theory. Austin Theory will defend the United States Championship against Seth Rollins, Johnny Gargano, Montez Ford, Damian Priest, and Bronson Reed inside the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. That is on Saturday from Montreal at the Bell Center. I will be live after the show is over to go over everything you guys need. You guys know the deal. Tune in to Off the Script on Saturday after the show. This is the first time in history the United States Championship will be defended inside the Elimination Chamber. Meltzer talked about this in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. He noted that something is going on with Austin Theory. WWE has taped a television show that airs in March, and Theory is featured on this television show holding the United States Championship. Now, this doesn't guarantee that Theory is retaining the title at the Elimination Chamber, but it's definitely a possible indication as to where WWE plans to go with the United States Championship. Meltzer says, and I quote, Theory taped a television show that airs in March holding the United States title. That doesn't mean 100% that he's retaining it, but it is certainly something, end quote. Now, I don't really think Austin Theory, if the match is what we think it is, and it's Theory versus Cena at WrestleMania, I don't think Austin Theory needs the United States Championship. Put the title on somebody else, free that title up, get it on the show and put it in a match like a Johnny Gargano versus a Bronson Reed or a Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa or something like that. John Cena and Austin Theory is a spectacle in itself because John Cena is coming back and wrestling at WrestleMania. That match doesn't need the championship because of John Cena's star power. Austin Theory would end up beating John Cena anyway. He doesn't really need to beat John Cena and retain the United States Championship. Beating John Cena in regards to Austin Theory is bigger than any United States Championship reign he will ever have. It will be the kickstart for that man's future in WWE. It will be the crowning moment of his career. Why does he need the United States Championship? And I also mentioned this on Monday when I talked about the, comp uh, the competitors in the Elimination Chamber. Bronson Reed is a wild card in this, and I say this because... He just came back. Triple H just brought him back. And he's been rather impressive in squash-like fashion so far. And he hasn't been pinned. And in this match, you only lose if you're pinned in the Elimination Chamber. Who's going to pin Bronson Reed in the Elimination Chamber? Why would you want to put him in the match and then ultimately beat him after he's been so dominant on TV and he just came back to television and you're building him up as a monster? I don't understand that. Now, Damian Priest is definitely somebody that could take out Bronson Reed. But my point is, why would you beat Bronson Reed in general, period? Doesn't make sense. He'd have to lose in that elimination chamber if he's not planned to win the United States Championship. Austin Theory does not need the United States Championship to go wrestle against John Cena. He beats John Cena at WrestleMania, and that's it for him. That's bigger than anything I could come up with with the United States Championship. Give it, give it to somebody else and have them have their own WrestleMania moment. So we'll see what happens. WWE tends to do this. They put advertisements out in advance because that's what's going on now. And then, you know, cards subject to change or plans subject to change. We don't know. But if they film something for television, he's going to be on television with the United States Championship this may be a big indication that he will retain the United States Championship and wrestle John Cena at WrestleMania for the United States Championship. So we will see what's going on there. I don't think he needs it, but stranger things have happened. The other spoiler, and this is a big one, because without them, the storyline at the pay-per-view on Saturday doesn't go as intended. The Usos. It looks like the Usos will be showing up at the Elimination Chamber after all. There were rumors going around, unconfirmed rumors, people making guesstimations online in the IWC. Oh, Jimmy's not allowed in Canada, but Jay Uso is. Then I hear people say that the Usos collectively, both of them aren't allowed in Canada. How's WWE going to pull off this storyline? 
Well, it's been talked about, and now Meltzer and Alvarez have discussed that both the Usos will be in Montreal for the Elimination Chamber. So Reigns will defend the title against Sami Zayn, or the titles against Sami Zayn in the main event. On Friday, SmackDown, the Usos retain the Tag Team Championships over Braun Strowman and Ricochet. There were still... You know, an issue, there was still an issue with Jay Uso and the rest of the bloodline. He's not in, he's not out. He's kind of doing his own thing right now. After the match, Sami Zayn and Jay Uso had a backstage segment where they did a fist bump. Reigns, who wasn't on the show, told Paul Heyman to tell Jimmy Uso that the Usos should stay home next week and not be at SmackDown or the Chamber pay-per-view to get a different perspective by watching the show on TV. This implied that he saw the segment between Jay Uso and Sami Zayn. Now, the belief is that due to Jimmy's DUI history, he would not be allowed back in Canada for a while, and he would miss the show. On The Observer Live, Meltzer talked about this with Brian Alvarez, and he was told that Jimmy is cleared to go in Canada and could be on the show with his brother. As previously reported, WWE is planning to do Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens challenging the Usos for the Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania And that is all going to come about at the end of that match with Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. Brian Alvarez says, and I quote, I don't think Jimmy can get into Canada, but maybe Jay is going to show up. Meltzer then says, I was told they are okay. Alvarez then says, Jimmy as well? I will check again, but when it first came up, I said, like, are they cleared for Canada? And I was told that they're both cleared. Alvarez then said, well, one way or another, and that they're not supposed to be there. Meltzer then says, I don't know if it's a swerve or a storyline. And Alvarez says, well, I'm sure they're going to show up to set something up. Whatever they're doing with Sammy at WrestleMania with Kevin Owens. I mean, Kevin hasn't been around, so you know he's going to show up and make a triumphant return to save Sammy in the end. I guess it just depends on how they get to it. They get to it by the Usos being there. They get to it by Jay Uso showing his allegiance and loyalty to Roman Reigns and the bloodline. That is it. Without Jimmy and without Jay, and most importantly, without Jay, it does not work. So if Meltzer is saying that they're there, take it with a grain of salt. He's wrong more than he is right. He takes these things and he just fabricates them in his mind and he makes it news. He makes it into a news article. We don't know. We don't know. But I'm going with the assumption that Jimmy's not allowed and Jay will be there. WWE wouldn't be playing this angle out the way that it is leading to this if Jay at least wasn't allowed in the country. So hopefully that is the case and hopefully we get everything going as planned and we get that tag team match built on Saturday night because Roman Reigns is going to go one-on-one with Cody at WrestleMania. They don't want to have Sammy, you know, and Cody neck and neck in the eyes of the fans thinking, oh, Sammy should be the one to take down Roman and not Cody. What they need to do, and I mentioned this several times already, is Roman and Sami is going to be an absolutely epic encounter. The crowd's going to be one of the best crowds you see in any WWE environment. That heat from Roman needs to transfer to Jay, and Jay and Sami are going to butt heads, and that relationship is going to be severed. Out comes Kevin Owens, makes the triumphant return, all that heat that Roman had with Sami, and people thinking Sami should be the one to take down Roman. It's now going to be transferred to Jay Uso, and the fans are going to be so hot for Sammy and Kevin Owens that they want them to get their revenge on the Usos and not Roman Reigns. Like I said on Friday night, like dust in the wind, the heat for Roman's going to go away and he's got nothing but Cody to worry about. That's the way it needs to be. So I hope Meltzer's correct. I really do. That's a big one if he's wrong on that. I don't think he's wrong on it because I wouldn't see WWE or I wouldn't think WWE would play this out on TV if they weren't sure that Jay Uso was at least going to be in Montreal. So we'll see what happens. Mercedes Monet, rumor killer on Mercedes New Japan Pro Wrestling contracts. Mercedes, formerly known as Sasha Banks, bet on herself, left WWE, and now is in New Japan Pro Wrestling. She will wrestle in San Jose against Kyrie on Saturday night, February 18th for the IWGP Women's Championship. In December, a report suggested that Monet would make more money from her New Japan deal than Chris Jericho made when he worked there 
from 2018 to 2020 and featured at Wrestle Kingdom events at the time. Jericho ruled this out in a Twitter post back in December. The rumor was going around again this week, and in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported that Monet is not making more money than Chris Jericho did. Meltzer says, the story that was going around about Mercedes and her making more than Chris Jericho was incorrect. It's not even close. The money is not at the level she could get with WWE or AEW. It's certainly very good money on a per-appearance basis, but that would tell you she's doing it just for the experience and a bucket list idea of wanting to do it at one point in prime or in her prime against top Japanese women wrestlers in Japan. Now, while speaking with the Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer also noted that Monet is, is only contracted to New Japan Pro Wrestling for a few matches. She is booked for the Sumo Hall Show, New Japan Pro Wrestling Sakura Genesis on April 8th from Sumo Hall, and Stardom in Yokohama at the Yokohama Arena on April 23rd. And that's it. She works through April. So where else is she going to go? I honestly think she joins AEW, and I do think that Mercedes joins AEW for at least a year or two, and we get her as the top act in that division. And I honestly think that AEW television, the way we are seeing it now, is kind of leading to Mercedes being the figurehead that is leading all these women in whatever civil war that's going on in the women's locker room right now on AEW television. The OGs versus the Outsiders. I do think that we get a blood and guts match to go along with that. And I do think that Mercedes is a part of that and joining the OGs in battle against, or the, the, the Outsiders rather, joining the Outsiders against the OGs in a battle in blood and guts. That's what I do think is going to happen. And if she's in New Japan for a couple of matches, at least till April, great. Great. She'll probably have a flexible schedule. She'll, she'll sign with AEW. I don't see her losing that IWGP Women's Championship so soon. That would be ridiculous. You don't give somebody like that a title reign for two months and then have them go bye-bye. She'll probably hold that title for a little bit, be the face of that division, travel back and forth, have a very lenient schedule with AEW, work AEW, go to Japan, do what she wants to do. She'll probably work Forbidden Door with that championship against somebody in AEW. It's going to be a great time for Mercedes. I feel like Mercedes is going to have her own little revolution happening on the AEW scene in New Japan. Maybe she goes to Impact and wrestles Mickey James. I know she posted something on our IG stories that she wants to wrestle Mickey James. She wants to go all over the place. I don't think she's going back to WWE anytime soon. This is something she wants to get out of her system. Meltzer talked about it being a bucket list thing for her to do. So I do think that she's going to do what she needs to do. And at the end of all this, when things have smoothed over and things have died down and Vince is really, really not coming back because we don't really know for sure, Mercedes, and she sees if WWE's women's division gets a little bit better, I can see Mercedes go back to WWE when the time is right. But right now, I don't think anybody should be talking about that. And right now, I think she is better off doing what she needs to do under a new persona, getting that work in, getting that experience in, doing what she's always wanted to do, winning new championships, wrestling new women, starting a new revolution, breaking down more barriers that she did in WWE. It's a great move. It's a great move. I think we should appreciate the fact that she still wants to do this instead of criticizing her for not joining the WWE roster once again, because to be quite honest with you, look at what's going on over there. Nothing has drastically changed at all, even though Triple H is in charge. And if Mercedes went back there, it would be more of the same. And right now, she's doing things that are brand new to her, new experiences. Why would you go back there to do Charlotte and Lacey and Shotzi and Becky? She's, did it, she's done it all. She did it all. Why does she need to go do that? So I can't wait to see what's up for her in 2023. I do think that Mercedes is going to have this own little, her or her own little revolution going on right now between AEW, New Japan, possibly Impact. We'll see what she does. It's going to be a very exciting year for Mercedes Monet. Guys, I'm getting out of here. I hope you enjoyed this little extra on your Monday afternoon. Let me know what you guys think down below. Is Jay White joining WWE? Do you think he joins WWE or do you think he goes... To AEW. Do you think Austin Theory should wrestle John Cena for the United States Championship at WrestleMania? Or are you like me and feel like the match does not need 
the United States Championship. And let me know what you think about Mercedes. Do you want to see her wrestle in the States here in AEW after her stint in New Japan? Or would you prefer her to go back to the WWE? All this, let me know down in the comments below. Guys, I'll see you live on Monday night following Raw. As always, we'll break it down on the post show. And then we'll take it from there. Brand new week of content right here on Off The Script. Follow me on social media. At JD from NY206. Twitter. Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed what you heard here. Hit that thumbs up as well. 1,000 likes on today's video. And go check out all the other content on the channel. Tons of it for you guys to get caught up on. I'll see you live tonight from the venue right here for Monday Night Raw on Off The Script. I'll see you guys later.